Uh, but right now, uh, we wanted to talk with Dory Molitor, who is the CEO of WomanWise, about marketing to women and some of the trends that are coming up in terms of marketing to women. Dory joins us now. Hey, Dory, how are you? I'm great. How are you, Esme? Very good. You have just come out with a new survey that shows what kinds of things women really want. A lot of people want to know, what do women really want? Well, we did. We did a survey. Um, we've actually um, have surveyed women several times over the last several years, but this particular survey was around um, understanding how what's important in their lives and how they define the American dream because we live in a time right now of a lot of uncertainty, and we wanted to understand what that meant to them. Um, and what's interesting is there was a previous survey done by Xavier University that came out and said that 55% of Americans have lost trust and confidence in our country. And, you know, government shutdown and all of that is a factor. Yet 63% of Americans are extremely confident or fairly confident in their ability to reach the American dream. So it was e that Even despite the housing crisis, because I think that's really, I think part of the American dream for many families is, is purchasing your own home. And I know many single women uh, who went out and, you know, got a home. And now there are a lot of people who are wondering, is that really part of the American dream? And it's or not. Is it part of the American nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> well, that whole the white picket fence um, and that whole vision and dream, it, it has vanished. It is not a priority to women. In our survey, only fifteen percent, one five, fifteen percent of women ranked owning a home as number one or number two most important thing for a happy and fulfilling life. So they, um, it's no longer this house in suburbia with a husband and 2.5 kids, that's just a building. And that is not part of what the American dream is for them anymore. They've, they've let go of that. Just uh, the specifically the housing part. Well, the, the, the specifically owning a house, that whole idea of owning a house. Now, what is interesting, the idea of marriage and children is still very important, but that's changed as well. Um, we like to say when we look at all their comments, it's like uh, Prince Charming need not apply because we have women today. There are more women in the workforce than ever before. They're in leadership roles. They um, have management, um, high-paying management jobs, bringing in equal money in the household. And she's de redefining what she's looking for in a husband. So we still had 46% of our women ranked a happy marriage as number one or two most important aspect of a happy and fulfilling life. But what's important is how they're redefining. It's no longer that traditional Ozzy and Harriet role of a husband. Um, as the provider, the person who's a provider. taking care but, of things. Yep. Well, she's, she's not looking for a man to complete her. She's looking for a partner to complement her life. Um, and she wants someone, a champion in her corner. She wants someone that's equal in every way, um, diapers and all, diapers, grocery shopping, all of that. And, she, and all, uh, in the women we talked with for all ages, it was so important to be self-reliant, self-sufficient, make sure they were making enough money that they could take care of themselves and their children. That became way more important than having a husband and certainly not, a, um, not looking for a husband who, or expecting a husband who would provide and take care of them. They want to be independent and self-reliant. Now, Dora, you, you do research in, into, you know, marketing strategies, and you've been, you know, you started at General Mills. I mean, what you're just talking about and what women want in a husband uh, in terms of the perception about, you know, maybe the, the picket fence, you know, the little house in the suburbs, the picket fence changing. I mean, how – is this something – I would imagine the husband part of it is something that's been evolving for the past couple of generations or maybe at least at least a generation, I would think. Yes. Yes, it has. And but what what I think um, now what it's saying is that even when they can have the ideal American dream, what's it all about? They're very strong, very um, sturdy in saying um, that traditional husband role is not what I'm looking for. It's not important to me. And they're really coming at it with more confidence and um, and um, and control into. Um, being a critical part of managing their own life.
All right, and you also mentioned that, that in, in the survey you found that spirituality is, is enjoying something of a, a re- renaissance. People are wanting to get back to spirituality. Yeah, th- th- that was really interesting. And actually, when we um, had women rank order, um, you know, all these among all these different things, what was most important to them from owning a home to a well-paying career, happy married, having children, spirituality, faith or religion, several other things. Um, spirituality actually ranked number two. Um, and part of that in their discussion, it was about um, spirituality, faith, religion, all of that came into one. And it, it's retrenching back to basics. It's putting family, friends, those people you love around you first. And a piece of that is the spirituality and faith. And I think a part of it is also that when it provides solace to women at a time when we're in a conflicted world. So it, it has raised, um, um, we, 86% of the women said spirituality was either extremely or moderately important in their life. You know, Dory, you, you're, you've got this consulting firm and, you know, people are going to look, companies are going to look at this study and, and they're going to take, you know, what they will out of it. But how does this translate into marketing and, and actually, you know, for companies to actually create products or, or create things that, that women want to purchase? Well, I think that in all of this, um, if I overarching thing that was interesting that came out of this study is that when our founding fathers wrote the Declaration of Independence. They talked about um, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And then our whole country got out of line, if you will, and it morphed into being about fame and fortune. And it became about having an endless credit card and a McMansion at the end of the block. And, And the thing with all of this, as we look at all their comments, the advice they were giving to future generations, what they were dreaming of, it all came back to saying, you know what, it's really about inner happiness. All of that, I mean, we had women, a woman quote, all that material crap doesn't matter. So it's about that inner happiness, and that that has relevancy to marketing in that she no longer is looking at material stuff to bring happiness. She is very driven to make the world a better place, and she wants to align with brands that are also doing their part to make the world a better place. She would go so far to say as companies have an obligation to bring about social change and make things better. So... For what it means for marketers is she's not just out buying stuff. She's not out seeking experiences. She is looking for meaning and purpose. And she expects you to stand for something and she will join your brand, buy your product if together she can find this meaning and purpose by joining in an effort with you corporate leaders, brand stewards in making a difference. Interesting, because you do see a, an awful lot of that uh, when, when you go out. And for instance, Target certainly makes no bones about the fact that they contribute a certain percentage to the community. Uh, when you go into the uh, the cleaning aisle, suddenly the cleaning products, you see more and more little ads or, or labels saying that this, this product is environmentally friendly. It sounds like that is all part of uh, a campaign to get people to spend their dollars there. It is part of it, but I would say it's not going far enough because, because, quite frankly, that's just the ante. That's an expectation that you're going to um, be con- conscious of your footprint and um, be environmentally um, fr- clean and friendly. It, it goes further than that. She's looking for um, something that is bigger than that. She wants to tr- help transform community. She wants to join brands with common purpose and, and bring meaning in her life. I mean, buying a all organic cleaning product is one little piece, but it's not bringing about as not enough change and bringing enough meaning in her life. All right. So what would be an example of a, of a product or a company that seems to be having success in this area? Well, you know, because we're here in Minnesota, I, I, I guess I would point to um, General Mills and their box tops for education programs. Sure. 
when I'm sure many of the listeners are very familiar with it. We've all done the cutting, clipping, we've, I've, we've got them at our house all over little piles. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So yes. what's, what's interesting about that is that started out as a small loyalty program, and they did it in certain communities in the country where coupons weren't effective because pe- consumers weren't willing or, or interested. So they started this idea of this box tops. Now, why that has grown into such a phenomenal success, you may or may not know, but there are 7 billion packages in your grocery store that across multiple categories and multiple companies that now carry that box top label. Um, So they kind of franchised it out, if you will, to other companies as well. Why that works so well and why that brings meaning and purpose. I kind of always look at programs and break it down into fulfilling me, we and higher purpose if i think of that program on a me level me as a consumer it gives me a tangible effort a tangible way to support my child's success by clipping that cutting clipping counting i am actively involved i feel like i'm making a difference and that fulfills that for me on a personal level then when i mention we that's a part of um, consumers and women wanting to be part of something bigger than themselves. And in this particular program, it's one little coupon until everyone joins together and they come together and they can see the collective power and the impact. So there's a we in this that together we know we can make a difference and I'm part of it and I'm part of something way bigger than I can do on my own. And then the higher purpose is absolutely about nourishing our young children and improving the quality of education. Real dollars go to schools. This past year, General Mills donated $50 million in one year t- year's time based on the redemption of those box tops. So that is an example of a company. They took a stand. They are authentic about it. They are committed to it. We all know that that makes a difference. So, and they know, they research this. Consumers will pick that brand that carries a box top over one next to it because of that emotional value and that purpose and meaning it brings in their life that they're willing to do that. Dory Molitor is the CEO of Woman Wise, a consulting firm, and the website is www.womanwise.com. 